De Zambiaanse econoom Dambisa Moyo. Door Time Magazine uitgeroepen tot een van de 100 meest invloedrijke personen op aarde. Een graag geziene gast bij CNN, Fox News, BBC World, CNBC. Haar nieuwste boek, Winner Take All. En de winner is? China. Um, the book subtitle is China's Race for Resources and What It Means for the World. And it's basically looking at the systematic and deliberate approach that China has adopted to secure resources around the world, such as water, land, energy and minerals. China heeft een enorme voorsprong genomen in de wereldwijde race om grondstoffen en landbouwgrond. Het land investeert in een razend tempo enorme bedragen in Afrika en Zuid-Amerika. For example, she went in Peru a few years ago, bought a mountain, which is Mount Toromocho, which is half the size of, of Mount Everest, um, which has got about uh, 2 billion uh, tons of copper. She's become the largest trading partner and foreign direct investor in Brazil. Numerous examples in Kazakhstan, across Africa for land. They've already built a road from Cape to Cairo. Wij kunnen het steenrijke China al lang niet meer bijhouden. Ons geld is op. This is part of the problem. I mean, certainly the fact that China has over three trillion dollars in foreign reserves puts her in a strong position to be able to go out around the world and do deals. Um, but I think what is more important is that the Chinese approach has tended to be very symbiotic, very positive and very friendly in engagement. So we, it's very important for people to understand that many of the countries and regions that China is going to, whether it's the Middle East or Africa, have significant pockets of young people. In places like Africa, over 60% of the population is under the age of 24. These people need jobs, they need opportunities, they need economic investment, and they need to trade. And China is offering that, um, as, that opportunity. A good example of the Chinese aanpak is the straatarme African land Congo. In ruil voor grondstoffen bouwen de Chinezen hier steden, havens, wegen en spoorlijnen. Ze zijn hier met ons, ze tonen de pad, ze doen alles. Contrairement aux occidentaux, die hier resten en in train de vous regarder en donnant des ordres, ze zijn in de bureau. Ben, pourquoi pas les Belges, pourquoi pas les Allemands, pourquoi pas les Français? Je crois que nous avons tendu la main à tout le, le pays qui pouvait euh, bien aider, entre autres la Belgique, qui n'oubliez pas qui est, euh, qui est notre parent en fait. Ben, je pense que euh, les Chinois ont accepté avec le moins de conditions et, et voilà pourquoi nous avons accepté de faire ces partenariats avec les, les Chinois. I think that the Western countries... Um, have definitely fostered this idea of us versus them uh, in the sense that the approach that, uh, that um, Western countries have used as policy towards emerging markets has tended to be one which has focused on aid um, but has not tended to focus on investment and trade. And so you've created this sort of split in the, in the economic uh, profile of different countries. I think that the better way would for there to be a level playing field where countries do not put up subsidy programs and lock out their neighbors from the markets, even though they, they are the proponents of free trade and free markets. So I would love to live in a world where the United States and Europe get rid of their subsidy programs and allow African farmers to trade their goods in, in a free and fair way. That's not the world we live in. Um, and I think that the reason why a lot of poor countries and, and policymakers across the emerging world are looking to China is because China has done something that no other country has been able to do. It's moved 300 million people out of poverty in a very short span of time, over 30 years. Um, China has been able to double her income per capita um, in 12 years. It took the United States about 57 years to do that. It took Britain about 156 years to do that. Um, and so we've seen China do something phenomenal um, which, for which they should be commended. And many countries struggling with young populations and struggling with poverty are very keen to see solutions, and China exhibits that. Het blijft opmerkelijk een Afrikaanse econoom die China als redder van haar continent ziet. Wat vindt ze dan van China's mensenrechtenbeleid? Well, first of all, I think this is vastly exaggerated. Um, they clearly have problems. They have human rights issues. They have democratic issues. They've got a billion people that are living in desperate poverty. So I think we should spare a thought for them. Um, whenever I travel to China, people complain a lot about how Westerners always want to be negative about what China is doing. Nobody ever gives them any credit for anything that they've achieved. The Nobel Pride o Prize always goes to, to dissidents. It never goes to the leadership to say, what you've done is really amazing. So I'm, I am sitting here, not as an apologist for China, I'm simply saying that they, of course, have issues. 
human rights and democracy and, and political freedoms. But I do think it's our responsibility as being part of the global economy to partner with the Chinese to help them move in that direction instead of taking a high uh, or grand uh, position where we think we should be lecturing um, to, to the Chinese population. I think that's where a lot of the efforts have fallen down. In 2020 is China naar verwachting de grootste economie van de wereld. Wat is volgens Mojo de grootste fout die wij hebben gemaakt? If I had to pick one problem with Western society and why it has found itself in this very, very dangerous um, and volatile place and economically, it's because there has been a deliberate choice by policymakers over the past 50 years in the West to make policies or put policies in place that disincentivize people from doing the right thing. People undersaved, they consumed a lot, they took on a lot of debt, and the debt that was, was brought in was for consumption and not for investment. So that combination of factors has led the West to be where it is today. And contrary to popular belief, it has nothing to do with China. The real problems, economic problems that the West is facing today have absolutely nothing to do with China. They have everything to do with the choices that Westerners have made about running their own economies.